Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this special evening edition of Tom and Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I am Stephen Corka. I'm Juan Frotch. Uh, we're here to talk about Solo, a Star Wars story. And just to give you a little background real quick, I have seen the movie. Wanski was supposed to see the movie, but did not see the movie. We usually go together because that's how we roll when it comes to this. But mm. I had the work, and and then when I was available, he had the work. No. So he was supposed to go while I was working, and I was supposed to go while he was working, which I held up my end of the bargain. And Wanski I don't like going alone, man. Decided, is that what it is? I don't want to be lonely no more. I was hoping you were going to be like, hey, dude, let's go together. I was going. I, I just couldn't. Work couldn't. You know what? For the sake of the show and getting and getting the review out there in a time. You did matter, it. You know, I, I had to make things happen. Yeah. Know? Got to make moves. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. And we're gonna be busy, huh? Because we got to see this month. Like the Incredibles comes out. The Incredibles comes out. Something else comes out. Jurassic World, Jurassic right? World Mission Impossible. Oh my God. Because Tom Cruise doesn't make bad movies. No, he does. not Oh um, wait. I'll even watch. I'll watch the Mummy again. Oof. Tom Cruise doesn't make bad movies. And Henry Cavill looks like a badass in the new Mission Impossible, by the way. Like, anyways, so, um, to, to, Wonski felt bad, so he went on the internet and he spoiled the shit out of the movie for himself. Yeah. So he knows a lot, but he doesn't know everything. Right. I did get him these noise-canceling headphones, though, which apparently he can still hear me, but can, can you... You know what we could do as an interesting review? What? I can ask you, based on what I've seen with all the Star Wars movies, I can ask you certain questions. Can you just, can you just put the headphones on? So 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 I know I didn't waste my money. How do how do things sound? Can you hear me? What is going on? Huh? <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about Star Wars, or should I say Solo, a Star Wars story, which I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I didn't think it was the best Star Wars movie by any means, but but it definitely was up there. It 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 it, it taught us a lot of a lot of things that we didn't know about where he got his name from, which appear, apparently oh by the way, spoilers, tons of spoilers. He got his name from an Imperial recruiter. That's where he got the term solo. We don't actually know what his actual surname is, so you know, Wonski was telling me what if he's a Wren? But he's not a Wren. Um, but anyways, um, so yeah, Solo got his name from an Imperial recruiter. Um, we met Lando Calrissian, which was played by Childish Gambino, who was just as charming and captured the essence of Billy D. Williams just the way we wanted to. We saw the Millennium Falcon for the first time, which belonged to Lando Calrissian. And if you were wondering what that weird thing on the front was, guess what? It was an escape pod, which they ejected in the movie. Also, we met this girl named Kira, who was played by Amelia Clark, also known as the Mother of Dragons, also known as Daenerys Targaryen. She was in her natural hair color, a brunette, and she was gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. But she was kind of like a villain, but kind of not. Um, it, it's interesting. She's the love interest of Han Solo, um, but... Uh, they get separated early in the movie. Three years later, he, he he sees her again. But apparently, like, you know, she's part of, like, these gangsters now. And, and she's, like, high-ranking, too, which probably means she fucked her way up. But either way, she's she's a high-ranking she's a high ranking officer now. And, and, and uh, sorry, that was that was rude. Let me just say, let me, that's not to say, that's not to say you can't achieve things, you know, you know, and, and you need to use your body to work your way up. That's not what I was saying here. But what I, what I was just, what I was just, what, what I was saying is she made it seem like she did like a lot of horrible things. So basically, horrible things include fucking her way up, killing people, stealing, um, um, human trafficking, all those things are horrible. So she said, I've done horrible things in those three years. So out of all those things I just named, fucking your way up is the least worst of those things. So I'm just saying. That <laughs> all right. So apparently the battery went out. I don't know where I left you, but I know I was talking about fucking your way up. And, and I was just basically saying... 
you know, like like Amelia Clark, who was Kira, Kira or Kira, whatever, you, however you want to say her name is Q Q I apostrophe R A, was basically saying, you know, I've done horrible things in the last three years, and I was apologizing to people because, you know, of course you can achieve high status, but she said she did horrible things, so we're probably talking like, you know, you know. Um, Raping, pillaging, human trafficking, stealing, murdering—you know—and then fucking your way up. So fucking your way up is the least. It's the least worst thing of the bunch. So if I got to pick one, I'm gonna fuck my way up. That's all I was saying. Anyways, so Woody Harrelson was in it. He was kind of like the mentor to Han Solo the whole time. Who Han Solo ends up killing, you know, at the very end of the movie, um, because Woody Harrelson would have done it himself. Because Han Solo l- learns the very valuable lesson of don't trust anyone except Chewbacca, who we meet. Um, on this planet um, that Woody Harrelson rats him out and he gets thrown into this pit against some giant monster that's going to eat him who turns out to be the Wookiee Chewbacca. I just, I, I, I really, I thought, I really thought that it was going to be like a Rancor. Drake fucked up Pusha T. I, I really thought it was going to be the Rancor, I would, and, but the fact that it was Chewbacca was great, but I was expecting a Rancor for some reason. But anyways, um, so Chewbacca comes in and uh, and and like I said, we met Lando Calrissian and his weird robot girlfriend L three, I think her name was something like that, um, who was all about robot rights and robot liberation, and actually like started a coup on this um, slave planet. Um, and then uh, there's also Paul Bettany, who was also an AKA the Vision, AKA Jarvis, who uh, AKA the creepy guy that 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 uh, was in a Beautiful Mind that. That which was also directed by Ron Howard, by the way, who directed Solo, um, and and uh, and he wasn't even a real guy; he was a figment of Russell Crowe's imagination, um, and uh, and he was actually like the bad guy. There really wasn't a bad guy in this movie, though. This movie was really a heist movie. It's a like a Wild West heist movie about just like like adios about about really just you know coming and you know uh, getting valuable things, getting getting the take. So that's what was going on there, and. Um, it was fun. It was fun. It was it was energetic. A lot of we saw the empire a little bit here and there, but 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 not much. It was just it was just enough to let us know the world we were or the universe we were living in without being too um, over the top. Um, the the basically at the end of the movie, you know, uh, Han Solo gets a tip from Woody Harrelson's character who he ends up killing um, about about a gangster on Tatooine, aka Jabba the Hutt, who has a job for him, which we all know that Solo has a bounty on his head for for screwing that job up um which we don't even see that happen because at the end of the movie uh, him and chewie say hey let's go do that after he wins the millennium falcon back in a fair hand of whatever that game was he was playing with lando because lando was a cheating guy as we, as we found out he had the cards in his thing so uh if you if you were a fan of the original trilogy um this answered a lot of questions it showed us how we got the millennium falcon it showed us how han and chewie met it showed us how Lando and Han met. It showed how how Lando said that he did the the, the how he had the Millennium Falcon and then Han got it from an affair game or whatever it was. And then we also saw the infamous Kessel Run as well, uh, which was actually this like in, like weird nebula or what I forget what they the Maelstrom I think is what they called it. Um, and and it, it was it was a cool scene. Sixty-five million overseas. What did Han Solo? 65 million overseas. Yeah, it's not meeting box office expectations. But overall, overall pretty good, pretty good flick. I do recommend seeing it. Uh, the the big the big surprise cameo, uh, the the juggernaut moment as some might say, was the reveal of Darth Maul uh, being alive with cybernetic legs from the waist down. Um, and and how uh, he was in charge of this gangster thing that Amelia Clark, Kira's character, um, it, it is uh, is working for who she still works for apparently. She had an opportunity to go with Solo and go live the life, but she chose not to. Whatever she did in those three years was really bad. Um, so if it was fucking your way up, it's not that you know that's the least. Um, she looked great though. She looked amazing, didn't she? One. These noise canceling headphones are amazing. I got them at Dick's. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Wonski. <laughs> Here, talk. So, so well, you had you had a couple questions. What's up, man? Hello, how you doing? So, um, some of the things. You have a question? You look. You look lost. <laughs> 
Oh, well, 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 welcome. Have you, look around. If you have any questions, let us know. So I read some of the stuff. Um, yeah. A lot of people are saying that this is Star Wars that is most Western. I'm a huge fan of Western genre, so. Are you really? Yeah, it's my favorite genre. I would say I w it has Western elements, but I would say it's more of a heist movie. Um, is, is Star Wars just basically like Firefly? Are they just becoming Firefly, just not as overt? In the whole star, in the whole like Western opera, like space opera thing. I would say so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a heist movie. It's a it's a total heist movie. It's like Ocean's Ten. Okay. Or Ocean's Eleven. Sure. Uh, did uh, he pull off uh, Han? But in space, did he what? Did he pull off Han? He did great. Really? He did great. I thought he you're did great. convinced. You're you're good with him being Han Solo. I'm good with him being Han Solo. I don't think he's as good as, of course, Harrison Ford. Right. You know, Harrison Ford has that swagger. Right. But uh, but 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 uh, he was definitely good. I mean, like in the trailer, like there, there are times where I feel like he he kind of reminds me of Harrison Ford. Yeah. No. So like there. So I don't know if in the movie that you get to see him longer. They did, that's they did a great job at right. casting him. What's another series that they did a good job casting people to look like people? Oh, Brolin, right, and Men in Black. Yes. As Tommy Lee, young Tommy Lee Jones. Great. Great. Yeah. Wasn't, there one, wasn't there a movie where they made the kids? And the adults look like they were. Oh, this is us. You don't watch that show. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, but yeah, they do. It's on my list. Too, yeah. um, how was uh, Shelter's Gambino as right. Lando? Lando was good. Did a, I, I said this earlier. Did a great job at capturing the essence of Billy D. Williams. I heard there's some weird shit where he's like, he's fucking the robot. There, there is the droid. There is a weird. There is a weird relationship. There's no. There's no actual robot sex. It's not mm -hmm, like that. But it's like a weird. But they did. They did. They did allude to some weird relationship. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. That robot's what becomes a Millennium Falcon's navigational system. That is correct. Did you talk about that? Uh, no. How do you feel about that? Because it was always understood that the Millennium Falcon was three different droid intelligences, right? I didn't even know that. Are you serious? Yeah. I had no idea about that. So one of the problems why CPO has a problem, C-3PO has a problem communicating. I didn't know that. With the Falcon. But R2-D2 is the one that... that right, because C-3PO is, you know, he can't do it. I... I sure. All right. Where'd you hear that? Hmm? Is that for real? Yeah. I read up a lot about, you know... Wow. Yeah. Um, I heard there was some some deaths. It's The, the one that got spoiled for me was Thandie Newton. Like she got killed off like twenty minutes into I the didn't movie, talk about her. and apparently they said She's that Westworld, they the said that it. she was great, that it was a huge mistake to get rid of her, that her character was pretty awesome. Yeah, no, you but, but you know what? You know, no, it's good that they did it. It's a very Rogue One approach. You have to, you have to kill off these characters because we don't see them in, in the actual. Right, movie, uh, that's know? true. So we need that. We need them to go away. You know, start Han Solo's mentor got killed. You know, mm -hmm. the, the the bad guy got killed. We didn't see Amelia Clark's character get killed, mm -hmm. so I don't know if they do a sequel. Um, they will explore. The they have to do a sequel, right? If they do, they'll explore Jabba. You know, because they didn't do that. They they just hinted at it. Right. Um, another thing. Dude, That'd be great. We saw we saw the beginning of the Rebel Alliance in this, mm -hmm. movie, which I didn't talk about. No. Oh. Which the people were they were they were, they were a bunch of random people, uh, different aliens and classes of people. Dressed up in like it looked like like Mad Max attire. It was weird. Okay. Yeah. I heard um. So I also heard that they changed uh, Chewbacca and Hans. Uh, how they meet. I have a good one, guys. Was that they that Chewbacca? they changed the the way that Chewie and Han become friends and meet. Wow. Well, what was the original take? I don't remember. I don't. I don't even think they ever told it. I mean, they met. They met. They met in a jail cell. They, oh. Well, yeah. Whatever. A jail pit. It was good. It's definitely worth watching. The action was great. Uh, I said this uh, earlier on Facebook and Instagram. It it is a. Uh, Where do you rank it? Amongst the Star Wars films. Sure, the canon films. Oh well, that's God. that's all there is. Well, it's not better than Rogue One. No. It's not better than Episode One, Two, Three. I mean, it's not better four, than Four, Five, Six. Okay. Sorry, Three. It's not better than Force Awakens. Um. So it's towards the bottom. I don't think it's better than Last Jedi. So you have it at the like the bottom. It's better than Phantom Menace, basically. It's better than Phantom Menace. It's better than Attack of the Clones. That's it. But this is a high bar, dude. Empire is great. Return yeah, of the Empire is great. great. Revenge of the Sith is great. Uh, New Hope is great. You know. Corker Comics. You know what? I might put uh, it until up until nine o'clock. Rogue One. Rogue One started out.
bad. I thought the first act of Rogue One was it was terrible, all over the place. super disjointed. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So maybe I'll put it up there with Rogue One. But the way Rogue One ended was fantastic, was amazing, and it it made up for everything. And and Darth Vader was used perfectly as well yeah. as Grand Moff Tarkin. Krennic was f- Krennic phenomenal. Was like the payoff, yeah. the payoff for for losing the first act was was great. So yeah. you know, I'm not gonna. Yeah. Are we done? Is that the review? Um. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, subscribe. To our we're gonna be watching a lot of movies coming up. A lot of movies. We'll try. We're gonna try to, to do it together. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We should announce like the week before for when we're going. Oh, we do that anyways. We do that anyways. We'll see if some people want to come see Incredibles with us. Really? I'm really excited for Incredibles. I'm excited too. Yeah. yeah. I, it's not gonna be as good as the first I'm one, right? I'm excited for Ant Man. Oh yeah, that looks great. Yeah, looks, that looks great. Uh, so subscribe, share, comment, like, repost. Uh, all our stuff on our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Corker Comics or just search Corker Comics. Oh, if you like the movie, by the way, we have the pops. We all do have the pops. The, Land- the Lando pops, awesome, guys. Yeah. yeah. The solo pops are here. So, yeah. Um, along with every other pop you could possibly think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, check us out either in Miami on 107th and 8th Street across from FIU or in Pember Pines on Pines Boulevard just east of University across from Perry Airport. For a top pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy, I'm Stephen Corker. Juan Farage. Thank you.